was Isaac Newton. He was a mathematician and probably number one on the list of top scientists of all time. Albert Einstein said, Isaac Newton was the smartest person that ever lived. You've got to be special if Einstein is calling you smart. Newton's three laws of motion was a huge idea, but did you know Newton also came up with the idea of gravity? The famous story is that in 1666, Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree when he watched an apple fall and wondered why. Hey everyone, I just invented gravity, which was a big relief because up until then, everyone was just floating around. Okay, so it didn't happen like that. He didn't invent gravity, he gave a name to this invisible force and then described how it works. Not only did it make things fall down, but it was the same force that kept the moon circling the Earth and the Earth circling the sun. And he invented a new kind of math to explain how. We now call it calculus. See, I told you he was smart. He's very smart. This is hydrophobic coating. Hydrophobic literally means afraid of water, but it's not actually afraid of water. The chemistry of a hydrophobic coating prevents water molecules from penetrating anything you spray it on. You can get this stuff at the hardware store, and if you want, be science maximites and get an adult and think of the coolest thing you could spray with hydrophobic coating. I like to use things that do not go well when you put them in water, like uh, tissue. Yeah, doesn't look great when it gets wet. Here's a tissue coated in hydrophobic coating. Huh? Weird. Or it works the same with a paper towel. Paper towel in water, paper towel covered in hydrophobic coating, stays dry. Or how about a dinner roll? Dinner rolls really don't like water. See? Gross. But a dinner roll coated in hydrophobic coating? Weird. Just don't eat it. Now, it's time to max it out. I have coated half of my lab coat in hydrophobic coating, and the other half, I have not. Hydrophobic coating, regular lab coat. Half of me is wet, and half of me is dry. What's more, half of my outfit ended up being wet and half dry because the lab coat was protecting my outfit from getting wet. <laughs> Back to our hoop glider, which was too heavy. Here's what I don't get. This is heavy, but I can still pick it up and throw it. Yep. An airplane is way heavier. I could never pick up an airplane, but that can fly. And that's because airplanes have engines, so it has a constant source of thrust. When we throw it, we just have an initial source of thrust. So we're throwing it, eventually loses its energy, therefore, it falls to the ground. I see. So we need something that's light. Light. And something that's strong. And strong. OK, well, let's see what we can find. All right. Sonia and I try a plastic tube and some heavy duty paper. We make hoops and attach them with some duct tape and run outside to try it out. Hoop glider dance. OK, three, two, one. Let's try that again. Here we go. I throw the hoop glider, and although it doesn't keep flying forever, it goes much further than our first version and also further than I could have just thrown the pipe by itself. That's pretty good. So we've done a good job of making something that flies. Why don't we make a couple different kinds out of different materials, and we'll see if we can get one that flies even better than this. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, OK, let's do it. <laughs> Sonia and I have created a pretty good maxed out hoop glider, but we wanted to see if different materials would make an even better one. Sonia made a much lighter version. This time I used cardboard. And I, I made this, made a slightly heavier one. Let's do it. OK, three, yeah. two, one, go. Not bad. My turn. Here we go. OK. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't really go very far at all, did it? No. OK, so now we can measure it against the one that we threw before. And see that went pretty far. This went pretty far to see yeah. if we've got a better design here. Here we go. Right? Wow. Awesome. So heavy one, no. Light one, no. Interesting. Uh, no. This design seems to be the best one. I keep thinking about how you were talking about thrust. Yep. All the thrust that we can put in is just what we can put in with one throw. Yeah. 
What if we could give it more thrust than that? How can we do that? Um, I don't know, like some sort of uh, slingshot or something. Like, a, it'd have to be a pretty big slingshot. A pretty though. big slingshot. Do you but think I think that a, sounds great, though. I think we make a big slingshot for this? Why not? OK, high five. Let's All do right. it. This does not look like armor, Jenna. This looks like pumpkin soup. Our first solution may not seem like armor, but it's a hard shell, and the pumpkin floats in the water. <laughs> when we drop it, the bin explodes, which slows the pumpkin down a lot. The result? Not perfect, but still, remember, it's better than our control. So compared to the control pumpkin, that did pretty well. That was pretty good. Yeah. yeah I'll give you that. What is this? All right, well, we've got a pumpkin covered in knee pads. Knee pad pumpkin! Yeah. Knee pads are armor for your body. So wrapping the pumpkin in knee pads... Knee pad pumpkin! Drop it, Phil! Uh, didn't seem to make much of a difference. Maybe it didn't land on a knee pad. <laughs> Maybe we just missed it. We ended up in between the knee pads. I think that must be it. It's looking, it's looking a little rough. But using sports equipment gave me an idea for using an advanced material. It's called sorbethane, and it's used in modern sports equipment. It disperses impact. See, watch this. Okay, so I've got a hammer, and I hit the pumpkin here, and it goes right into the pumpkin, right? So take that. Now I hit it again on the sorbethane, and... Haha, -ha, see? Nothing. So I thought maybe this will cushion the, the impact. The result? Not bad. I don't think it dispersed it quite well enough. There is a crack coming right from the hole that you made with that hammer. OK, so the hole might have structurally weakened the pumpkin a little bit. So the sorbet thing did a pretty good job, actually. Yeah. Good thing it is in athletic equipment. That's what it's for. Carbon fiber is a very modern kind of material. It's carbon meshed together and then glued down, so it's super strong. Super strong, and the pumpkin is contained inside. It's like double shields. Yeah, so can I test how strong this is? Oh, yeah, this is the armor solution, so let, let's try it out. Yeah, better try it. Whoa! But when we drop it, we realize there were too many hard surfaces and not enough cushioning. But the carbon fiber held up really well. Slowing the pumpkin down and cushioning it is the answer, which leads me to my final solution. I call it the lunar lander. That's what I was doing. I was coming in and like, right? Right. Yeah. See, I thought we were supposed to be doing armor? Yes. Um, so this is armor. I know it looks like foam, but you see armor like in a helmet, it's supposed to crumple to protect your head, right? right? So this will also crumple because it's not just foam, there's wood inside. So the wood is supposed to break and then the foam bends and the whole thing is supposed to cushion the impact of the pumpkin. Ooh. That looks pretty good. The landing crushed and broke a lot of the arms of the lander, but the breaking cushions the impact. Oh, what do you think? I think it's, I think it's good. I think we're good. This is a chain of beads, and this is a uh, glass. Now, if I was to drop the chain of beads, what will happen? It will fall. Yes, that's right. It'll fall because of gravity. But watch this. This side goes up. Why? Because of gravity. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why does one side go up because of gravity? Well, it gets a little complicated, but I can explain. Um, but I think I should... I'll have to put the beads back in the glass. OK, so what's going on? Well, when this part of the chain starts falling out, it gets longer and longer, and it has more mass than this side of the chain. And if it has more mass, then it has more inertia. And when it starts yanking out very hard, this side of the chain gets yanked up out of the glass very quickly. When it gets yanked up hard, it flies into the air. But then, of course, the direction has to change, so it goes around a curve and then goes back down. Because of the speed that it's going, that curve starts lifting up over the top of the glass. And that's how it works. There's a big difference in energy because this chain falls far. I try it from here, and it doesn't work as well. Why? Because the drop from here to here isn't as big. You want lots of force acting on the falling chain, which means the higher you do it from, the better it works. So maybe we should max it out. Yeah. Oh, wait, we should wait for it to stop. And now let's max it out. This is a really long chain, and this is a really long drop. Let's see what happens. Whoa! 
Look at that. Whoa, Supermax down! Science!